Emerson College in Boston, Massachusetts have released a guideline for inclusive language. But before we delve into it, this shit will either make you laugh or enrage you. You have been warned. So according to the guideline for inclusive language, the term homosexual is offensive now. Instead, we should use the words gay or lesbian when referring to homosexual people. I thought it was offensive to segregate women by using lesbian and to just refer to them as gay like all homosexuals. Shows how much I fucking know, doesn't it? The guide doesn't tell you why homosexual is offensive all of a sudden. I mean, gay and lesbian are more divisive words than homosexual and heterosexual, aren't they? I mean, homosexual doesn't look at your gender or race or whatever. It just tells us that you like people of the same sex. What else is there in this shit? Personal pronouns. Well, they couldn't fucking let personal pronouns slide, could they? Respect a person's chosen personal pronoun. Some transgender and gender expansive people identify as he, she, or ze. Z, ze, whatever. But some may identify as both male and female, or neither. Well, they can identify with whatever they like. What they can't do is force me to buy into their bullshit. You are one gender or another. You can't be both. And you can't be neither, except in some very rare medical cases which this guide is not referring to. I mean, the fact that it says the person's chosen pronoun shows what molly-cuddling bullshit this whole thing is. I have no problem referring to a transgender person as a female or a male or whatever but I don't expect to be expelled or hated for not doing that, because at the end of the day, I'll refer to a woman as he if I want to. And that might be a cunty thing to do, but it's not necessarily hateful. What else have we got? Okay, here we go, yeah. Gender-inclusive language. This should be fucking good. Use gender-inclusive language unless you are talking about something gender-specific. There are a number of ways to avoid using a gender-specific pronoun, he or she. Oh, and ze, dickhead. See, they're tripping up over their own bullshit here. 1. Recast the sentence and make the subject and object plural. Each student must hand in his paper by 2pm on Friday. Instead of that, you should say, students must hand in their papers by 2pm on Friday. Well, that's what I would say. But I wouldn't call for someone to be hanged, drawn and quartered just for saying each student should hand in his papers on time. It's a cunty thing to cry about, and you've got a really privileged life if this is the type of shit you're worried about. So good for you, I suppose. Any more of my free speech they want to police? Yeah, what about gender-inclusive titles or terms? Use anchor, not anchorman. Artificial. Not man made. Fucking hell. Business executive, not businessman. Camera operator, not cameraman. Fuck me. This is so ridiculous. Notice how all these phrases are male orientated. What about barmaid or housewife? Are they incredibly offensive now as well? And if so, why aren't they included in this list? Look, lay person, not lay man. Police officer, not police man. And going back to the whole gender thing for a second, what the fuck am I meant to do if I can't assume someone's gender? Ask every cunt I talk to whether I'm allowed to refer to them as she or not. If I'd asked my girlfriend if I could refer to her as a she when we first met, she'd have walked away from that conversation, one, thinking I was a weirdo, and two, she'd be asking herself, do I look like a fucking man or something? If you look like a man, I'll assume you're a man and 99% of the time I'll be correct. You can't win this fight. You're always going to offend someone. You can please some of the people some of the time, but you can't please all of the people all of the time. If I'm ever wrong about your gender, then respectfully correct me and tell me that I'm wrong, and I'll respectfully refer to you as your chosen pronoun if you want me to, but only if I respect you enough to want to do that. Now then, let's see if we've saved the best section for last. Power-based interpersonal violence is an umbrella term for interpersonal violence, sexual assault, 
harassment, stalking and threats, abusive relationships and bullying, child abuse and human trafficking. This term connotes interconnectedness of those forms of violence, as well as the rooting in power and control over someone else. Okay, so apparently we now need an umbrella term for fucked up shit that's happened to you. In circumstances involving those who have been affected by power-based interpersonal violence, use the phrase, person who has experienced power-based interpersonal violence, no shit, instead of the term, victim, which has negative connotations. Cunt, being raped does make you a victim. And it sure as shit does have negative connotations, as it should. Jesus. Survivor can also be used if an individual prefers this term. However, it can also be considered negative in that it defines a person solely by an experience. No, it fucking doesn't. You don't refer to that person as survivor for the rest of their lives. Peter or Sarah or Rachel doesn't inherit the pronoun survivor now that they've been raped. Could we have boys on this side, girls over here, and survivors outside where no one can fucking see you, please? Doesn't happen, does it? When individuals share their experience of violence, use the terms said, shared, and experience, rather than admitted, confessed, and story, which convey disbelief and bias. Well, yeah, that's fair enough. Although you shouldn't just assume that what everyone says is honest. Someone might be lying to get someone else into trouble. When individuals have experienced sexual assault, including rape and child sexual abuse, refer to the behaviour as sexual assault instead of sex or other terms that minimalise the behaviour and violence. To refer to sexual assault as sex is similar to referring to drowning as swimming. Well, who's ever done that? Being raped and having sex are two different things, obviously. Who needs to be told this shit? The people that need to be told this shit shouldn't be going to fucking college, should they? Use relationship violence, domestic violence, dating violence, intimate partner violence, or abusive relationship, rather than dispute, quarrel, and love triangle, which minimalise violence. Well, it depends on whether the issue is actually violence or not, doesn't it? Calling your girlfriend a bitch isn't very nice, but it's not violence, as I've heard some people refer to it. This shit's a bit too vague for me. Use the term reported instead of accused, claimed and alleged, which convey bias and disbelief again. Innocent until proven guilty, dickheads. Until this person is proven of rape, then the person who has claimed to have experienced power-based interpersonal violence has reported it, and reported it is all they've done. An investigation will take place to see if the person has actually experienced what they say they have, or to see if it was a load of shit because that person was lying. Use the active voice. For example, he raped him. He abused her. They reported that he assaulted them, rather than the passive voice. For example, he was raped, she was abused, they were assaulted. Which removes the accountability of the person who committed the behaviour and blames the person harmed. The fuck? If reporting on a case in a current campus or legal process, utilise what was reported, such as, they reported that he assaulted them. Well, what bugs me about this is that it's always the men doing the assaulting. He raped, he abused, he assaulted. It's almost as if you've got a narrative that you want to portray. Women can rape and physically assault as well, you know. So there you have it. Before you send your kid off to college, just think, would an apprenticeship be better? Will they actually learn anything at college other than this bullshit? Something worth thinking about, maybe. I'll see you later.